Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin Lecture in Computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to select the correct t-test when we want to compare two sample means. So let's remind ourselves what we are trying to do with a student's t-test. Let's say we've got two samples, sample A and sample B, and I've got some sample values for each of the two samples here, and we'd like to be able to compute and interpret a test for differences between these two groups. So we've two samples, and the appropriate test is a t-test. And student's t-test is used to compare the means of these two groups. Now, unfortunately, it's not quite straightforward in that there are different types of t-tests, so we need to know which one is the right one to choose. So let's build a path to, from the start of our two samples to uh, the different types of t-tests that we want to use. We're comparing two samples, so the t-test is the appropriate um, test to use here. And we first of all have to determine whether the uh, samples are unpaired, and that means they're independent of each other, or whether they are paired, and that is they are dependent on each other. And a further complication here is that when we have unpaired samples, we have to determine whether the variance is equal between the two samples or unequal between the two samples. So let's take a look at unpaired t or independent t-tests first. We have to determine whether the variance is equal or unequal between these two samples. So in an unpaired or independent t-test, we will have two groups being tested once. So what we should do is we should calculate the variance for both groups and then uh, use that in a simple f-statistic formula to tell us whether the variances are equal or not. So our f-statistic uh, is equal to the larger variance divided by the smaller variance and values closer to 1 will uh, indicate equal variance between the two samples and values that uh, deviate considerably from 1 would indicate um, unequal variance between the two samples. So this simple f-statistic is what we need to tell us about equal or unequal variance. Once we have that done then, let's take a look at the t-test formula that we use when we have equal variance. Uh, we can see the t-test formula over here on the right-hand side, so let's go through that first. We first of all um, subtract the, one, the mean of sample 1 from the mean of sample 2, so we get the difference between the, the sample means. We also then have to count the number of values in each sample, so we'll have n1 and n2. And the complicated bit in this uh, t-test formula is the pooled variance that's here in the centre. Because our variances e are between the two samples are equal, we pool the two variances. And our formula for calculating the pooled various uh, is the one that's in the middle here. And we can see that uh, we have um, N1 and N2 uh, used quite a lot in this formula, but also very importantly the sample variance for uh, group 1 and the sample variance for group 2, which by the way we have already calculated when we were doing the F-test. So we just uh, substitute those values for variance 1 and variance 2 and N1 and N2 and we will get our pooled variance which we can then use in our t-test formula. We also need um, degrees of freedom uh, when we are looking up our t-tables and our degrees of freedom here are quite simple. They are the numbers of values in sample 1 uh, plus sa sample 2 and subtract 2 from that to give us our degrees of freedom. So that's our t-test formula and for pooled variance and degrees of freedom for when we have equal variance. Now let's look and see what happens when we have unequal variance. Our t-statistic formula is uh, similar, but there is a subtle difference in this compared to the one that we previously looked at. So first off, we take the difference between the two sample means, as we did before, and we also take the number of values in sample 1 and sample 2, that's n1 and n2. This time, however, you can see that there's no pooled variance, so there's no awkward formula to calculate pooled variance. We just simply substitute the variance for sample 1 and the variance for sample 2, which, of course, we have already calculated when we were doing the F-test to determine equality of variances. So we plug those values in there, and we will get our t-statistic. A little bit more awkward with this formula is the formula for degrees of freedom. Uh, we can see it looks and reads quite complicated, but uh, when we break it down we can see again it is the number of values in sample 1 and number of values in sample 2, n1 and n2, being used quite a lot. And also the actual variances are put in here, so we've got the sample variance for group 1 enter twice and the sample variance for group 2 enter twice. So we've already got these, so substitute those values and that will give us our degrees of freedom. So that's the uh, t-statistic formula for when we have an unpaired uh, uh, data and unequal variance. Now let's go back and take a look at when we have paired or dependent samples. In a, in a test like this, we would generally speaking have one group being tested twice. A very common variation on this is that uh, we would have a before and after situation. So one group being tested twice. Uh, 
And our t-statistic formula is quite different here. You can see straight away that there's no, no sample variance and there's no means being calculated here. So um, the key thing in it is the sum of the differences. So we have this value here, sigma representing sum and capital D representing the differences. So uh, what we have to do is we have to subtract uh, each of the, uh, the value for each of the pairs in our data, uh, get all the differences between the two sets of data and add them all up and that gives us the, our sum of D. That's the sum of the differences. And uh, we can see then we've got that value uh, in the formula three times n in this formula in this case represents the number of pairs uh, a little bit different than uh, what we had in the previous tests. Our degrees of freedom is a very simple calculation here it's simply degrees of freedom is equal to n the number of pairs minus one. So that's our t uh, statistic formula for when we have paired our dependent samples. So let's summarize first off we are uh, comparing two samples so a t-test is appropriate we have to determine whether our data are paired or unpaired. So if our data are unpaired, we have to then determine whether the data are the samples have equal variance or unequal variance. If we find with an F-test that variance is equal, then we use the T-statistics formula here on the top right-hand side. This is the formula that uses pooled variance, which has to be calculated separately. When we have an unpaired test and we have unequal variance, we have a different uh, set of, of uh, formula here. Our t-statistic formula is relatively straightforward. It uses uh, the actual variances this time rather than the pooled variance. And the only awkward piece from this formula is our calculation for the degrees of freedom. But again, it's using values that we have already calculated, so we should be able to substitute them there to get our degrees of freedom. Finally, if our uh, two samples were paired or dependent on each other, uh, we use a t-statistic formula which is based on the differences between the two samples. And uh, once again, our degrees of freedom formula here is very straightforward. It's just n, the number of pairs, minus 1. So make sure you choose the correct path. Um, we've got three possibilities here, equal variance, unequal variance, and a paired t-test. So you must use the correct formulas, the correct calculations for variance, and the correct calculations for degrees of freedom in order to conduct the appropriate or correct t-test. So that's how you uh, select the correct t-test. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.